All right, today we're going to talk about salt solutions. So we've already talked about acids and, and bases and finding the pH, but here's the thing. Usually if we were to think back to Chem 1 and, and we were to talk about a salt water solution, you would think, oh, well, that's neutral. It doesn't have an acid in it or a base in it. And what I want you to understand that, first of all, is salt is a very general term and that, in fact, not all salt solutions are neutral. Some are, like NaCl is neutral. But then some aren't, like NH4Cl is not neutral. And so it becomes a matter of what's inside the salt that becomes important. So let's just first talk about a neutral salt. In other words, a salt that actually will give you a pH of 7. A neutral salt is a salt, and I'm going to describe this and explain to you what I mean by this, a salt made of a cation from a strong base. So for example, it's got something like sodium, which comes from sodium hydroxide, which is strong, or potassium, KOH is strong, or calcium, um, calcium hydroxide is strong, and an anion from a strong acid, such as you know, Cl minus, HCl is a strong acid. Um, Br minus, HBr, you know, NO3 minus, HNO3 is strong, um, et cetera, those kinds of things. Um, that's what a neutral salt is made of. So, for example, NaCl, that comes from a strong base, this comes from a strong acid, it's neutral. Um, you know, KBr, this comes from a strong base, this comes from a strong acid, it's neutral. You know, CaBr2, from a strong base, from a strong acid, it's neutral. Um, and the idea is because it actually doesn't have any attraction to the water molecule to pull apart some of the hydrogens or hydroxides, as I'll show you in the non-neutral salt. So let's take a look at a non-neutral salt so you can see perhaps why this happens. So let's take a look at NaF. Here's what I want you to see. First of all, Na is a neutral part of this salt because it comes from a strong base, sodium hydroxide. But HF is not a strong acid, folks. It's one of the ones everyone wants to think is strong. But HF is actually a weak acid. So if we put that salt into some water, I want you to see what happens with the non-neutral part of this. That F minus will react with the water to form an equilibrium reaction to form HF and OH minus. Well, HF is weak, and so it, it doesn't fall back apart again. It actually sticks together as a molecule, which leaves these OH minuses in the solution. And so this solution is basic. Now, let's take a look at another example. And your book will go through nice sentences like, conjugate base of a weak acid causes your solution to be basic. Well, it, it's just easier, you guys, to look at it and go, oh, this is going to cause it. How is it going to react with water? It's going to you know, form this acid. Oh, and look, OH minuses are left behind. That's why it's basic. Um, let's look at NH4Cl. Cl, that's a neutral part of it because it comes from HCl, which is strong. But the ammonium ion, NH4OH, that's not a strong base, so that's going to have an impact. So let's say we put that salt again into a water solution. And let's take a look what happens when you put NH4 plus in water. Well, you end up with ammonia and H3O plus. Well, H3O plus is interchangeable with H plus. So here, that's going to cause this solution to be acidic. And so this salt will actually be an acidic solution. So that's kind of the premise behind that. Now, what I want to do is to just do two example problems with you. Here's the first example. And we're going to compute the pH of some salt solutions. What is the pH? of a tenth molar ammonium chloride solution. And I'm going to give you the Kb for ammonia 
is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And that's going to become important to us. So we're just going to do the four steps. Um, the ammonium is the part of that salt that's going to impact our pH. So we're going to write an equation with that in there. We can go ahead and write a Ka for that as well. Again, you know, same stuff as we've been doing. And again, any H3O plus and H plus are the same. Could have actually written this as the dissociation of ammonium ion, if you would like. Um, so, sorry, small glitch there. Anyway, um, taking a look at this. Um, as we go through this and we go ahead and write up these, this ice table with ammonium ion and ammonia and, and H3O plus, again, same stuff that like we've been doing. We know it, it's 10th molar from the problem in here, and essentially we have no ammonia or H3O plus. We lose some, we gain some. And now we can plug it into the Ka expression. Here's the trouble. We are given a Kb for ammonia. So if you think about what we did in class, we know that Ka times Kb is equal to Kw. So we know the Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We know that the Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And so we can solve for the Ka here um, being, whoops, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. And so we do need to do that in order to plug that in. All right. Now, incidentally, you guys, that is such a small value. I would totally 5% this. Um, it's going to end up being less than 5%. But when you solve it for x, you get x is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6. That's equal to the H3O plus ion concentration. You can take the negative log of that, and you get a pH of 5.12. Obviously, this is an acidic salt. We can confirm that, although we could have we knew that already. Um, all right, second example. We'll deal with that sodium fluoride. Um, what is the pH of a 0.3 molar NaF solution? And the Ka for HF is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Again, we're going to write an equation. So we know the sodium ion is part of a strong base. It's not that, so it's going to be that fluoride ion. And so react it with water. Always react it with water, and that'll allow you to do that. Um, this is the base. It's going to accept a hydrogen and leave behind OH minus. Um, we can write the Kb because it's a base here. So HF times OH minus over F minus. And, you know, go ahead and do the ice table. Trying to get that all in. And here again, we have, you know, we have, we're starting with 0.3 of this. Essentially, we're starting with none of this. Lose some, gain some, all of that. Plug that into the Kb, and again, we don't have the Kb. What we have is the Ka. So again, plug that into, you know, Ka over, you know, we know Ka times Kb is equal to Kw. Solve for the Kb here, and the Kb, um, I don't know what that turns out to be, but you guys can go ahead and calculate it. Um, but essentially, x squared over 0.3 minus x is equal to the kb, whatever you have found that out to be. Um, I did solve this, so if you're working along and using your calculator, which you should be, um, you can go ahead and check my math, see if this turned out right. Um, 2 times 10 to the minus 6, that's equal to the OH minus ion concentration. Um, and to find the pH, I would take the pOH. 5.69 and, and subtract it from 14 to get the pH there. The only other thing I'm going to mention is sometimes you have a salt like NH4F, which contains a, a cation that's from a weak base and an anion that's from a weak acid, so they're both going to 
um, play a role, and this, of course, would have a Ka associated with it, and this would be a Kb. We will not do any math associated with that. We were not going to compute the pH, but you should be able to predict if it's acidic or basic, and the way you're going to do that is if the Ka is greater than the Kb, that means the acid falls apart more than the base, it's going to be acidic. If the Kb is greater than the Ka, then the base is falling apart more, making more hydroxide, and so it's going to be basic. And if the Ka and the Kb are essentially equal, then it's going to tend to be neutral. So there you have it for salts.